and welcome to my channel, Purposeful Play, where I talk about all things early childhood education. I'm Danielle and I teach 4K in Wisconsin. And today I am going to talk about our week four for our tree study. And our focus question this week was, I have to actually look for the wording of it. It is, what food comes from trees? So let's get started. I want to say I'm sorry that it's taken me this long to get um, week four up and out to you. Uh, my daughter who has been sick for a couple of days with some stomach yuckies and has kept me up during the night. Uh, even when they're 16 they still need you. Um, and I then did not feel so great so I've been playing catch up for a couple of days. Um, but I'm here to tell you about our week four. So on Monday, which I actually wasn't there on Monday. Um, I had to cancel my whole group meeting, but I'll tell you what was supposed to happen. Um, we did our hello song. The question is, did this grow on a tree? And it was an apple. And they all knew that it went, to, that it grew on a tree. Our movement was a pattern. So we were starting to look at just an AB pattern. And so it was a body movement one, you know, like a a tap, clap, tap, clap. Um, do they know what the A and B parts are and what would come next? And then I asked a couple of kids if they could show us a pattern and that if we could follow it. So just to get our bodies moving before we read our book, which was a reread of Trees Count. And we, before we read Trees Count, we talked about things that grow on trees and we made a list of all the things we could think of that grew on trees. And this was our list. So they actually did a pretty good job of coming up with some things. And we found out later on that, actually I think there was only one thing that did not grow on trees. Um, so we, we made our list and then we read Trees Count and we talked about the things we saw that grew on trees that could be um, eaten. And it didn't mean that it could be eaten by people, it could be eaten by anybody really. So we kind of had a little bit of a discussion about things that were considered food that grow on trees. Um, so that was actually a great way to reread this book, but in a different kind of way and talk about different things. Um, and then we sang our goodbye song. So that was our morning meeting and, well, was going to be our morning meeting. I actually ended up doing this on Tuesday, but that's okay, I'll, I'll catch you up on what we actually did. Um, we had two seesaw activities that day. One was our um, second step social emotional lesson, which was on caring and helping. And there was a little puppet, puppet show and our kids responded to it. And then the second one was a counting activity that had um, foods that grow on trees, not necessarily for people. And the kids had to count those um, out loud by using their little, the moving finger on seesaw. And then um, if they could, they could, use the drawing tool and write the number. Um, it was great little assessment to see who could count, how high they could count, are they one to one, and do they know what the digit looks like? And then our play and choice time activities, there was a, a mindful moment, which was a, a yoga for kids with animals. It wasn't me doing yoga this week, um, but it was just a YouTube. All videos I will link down below so you can check them out on your own. The other one was the kids needed to look through their cupboards and see if they could read any of the labels in their cupboards. And then um, there was a little poem that's called, I had a little nut and they could act it out. And let me tell you how that poem goes. All right, I'm just gonna read it off my computer here. And the kids could uh, recite the poem and then act it out and then change what kind of tree it was. It's so, here's how, here's how it is. I didn't make it up, it's from our creative curriculum. It says, I had a little walnut tree out swaying in the sun. I wanted 60 walnuts, but it gave me only one. My best friend came to visit me and make a walnut pie, but when she saw my lone walnut, she he heaved a heavy sigh. And then the kids acted out the poem and some of them actually um, recited it to us. Um, with changing the numbers and the kind of tree it was. So that was kind of cute. 
And then the last thing that was a choice was um, to play your turn, my turn. So having somebody play with you using the wood pieces from our Learning Without Tears um, program. And they were create, you know, making uppercase letters, saying what it was, and then the child would make that letter. And then they'd take turns. So then the child would take a turn and the other person would make the letter. So that was Monday. Forgot to mention on Monday, small groups was um, reading environmental print. So the kids um, brought something from their cupboard that they could read. And then we, they each took a turn showing it and, and reading the word. And they, I made a big deal of it. At the beginning, I was like, oh, do you know how to read? And they're like, oh no, I can't know how to read. And I'm like, yes, you do, let's read together. And every time somebody read a label, I was just like, yes, I knew you could read. And their eyes were just lit up and they were so happy, which was fun. And then I had um, a memory game. Um, no, it wasn't memory, it was, it was Jumpin' Jelly Bean. Um, if you don't know what that is, I'll put a link down below for my small group ideas of the Jumpin' Jelly Bean game. Super easy. Um, on the the shapes that I covered up the pictures, I did letters and as the kids were telling me, then I kind of jotted down which letters that they knew, just a quick assessment. Um, and then as we revealed things, um, we read them. So there was Oreos and goldfish and they were so excited because they could read the labels. So that was really fun for our small group. All right, on Tuesday for our whole group meeting, um, our question of the day was, does this grow on a tree? And it was an almond. And so we were talking about things that it's not just fruit that grows on trees, but nuts grow on trees as well. Um, our movement was um, the movement patterns, like patterns again, but we changed it up a little bit. We did like A, A, B patterns or A, B, C. And then the kids, I took a turn and then we had several kids do it so that we could follow their pattern. Um, before reading our story, we went back to our list that we made and we kind of made little marks on it. Do humans eat it and do animals eat it? So we only went through a couple of them before we read our story, but um, we talked about if animals ate them and if humans ate them. And then we read, I'm pulling out my books here. Do I have it here? Who lives in trees? And we talked about what these things ate in the tree. So in the, yeah, th these animals, what they ate. And also, did we eat those things? And did they come from trees? So like, a, let's find one. I'm trying to find one. Do frogs, frogs, do we, they eat something that grows on a tree? They don't, but they eat insects that might live on a tree. So it made for some really great conversations. We actually did not get very far in this book because we talked a lot about it. This is a reread from last week, maybe? I think it was last week. And then for our seesaw activities, there was a sorting activity where the kids um, had to sort foods. Did it come from a tree and did it not come from a tree? And I actually stumped a lot of them with apple juice, which I'm surprised because they know that apples come from trees, but I think it confused them about the apple juice. I just went back and looked and noticed that we didn't actually have a second seesaw activity for Tuesday, but that's okay. For their play and choice activities, the movement was going on a bear hunt and it was just the words and some music. And so the kids could make up their own actions to the bear hunt. The second one was um, going on to Epic Books and looking at the book called Good Things from Trees. And then one of them was cut an apple in half, look at the seeds, and then make, if you have paint at home, make um, stamps or prints from the apple half. And the other one was making a balance scale um, with a coat hanger, a strings and cups. Um, again, I'll put the link down below because it was a really great activity. Kids had a lot of fun with it. They could put um, items from their tree collection or foods from trees and see which one was heavier and which one was lighter. So that was kind of cool. Small groups on Tuesday, we just, um, again, looked in our cupboards or our fridge and the kids shared something. Well, usually they had like two or three. We just kind of rotated around foods that came from trees and why we thought it came from a tree and why not. 
Wednesday, our asynchronous day, we had three seesaw activities. One was looking through your cupboards and taking pictures of food, um, food items that um, came from trees. And the second one was our second step. It was a little story about caring and helping. And then the third one was just listening to the read aloud, um, chicka chicka one, two, three. Our play and choice time activities on Seesaw let me just check to make sure, because sometimes we change them after I do this. Um, we had in their tree journal to draw some of the foods that they found that come from a tree. And I also write the for at least the first letter of that food item. Um, the mindful moment was an apple tree yoga. I didn't do any yoga videos this week. I was just not feeling up to it. But so I connected a, a link to that one. And then the last one was check out this website. Um, that has a lot of activities and games and videos and it's called Eek, which is environmental education for kids and there are actually lots of really good tree activities and games and stuff on there so I will link that down below. All right Thursday which is today I think today's Thursday I'm so off this week. Our question of the day was, did this grow on a tree? And it was a picture of grapes. And that really confused a lot of kids. They thought it grew on a tree. So we talked about how some fruits do grow on, grow on trees and some don't. Um, the movement was a little poem called High in the Tree. I wish I had taken a video of it, um, but it's at school. It was on sentence strips and I had a little felt board. Um, so I'll just actually stick a picture of it right there so you can see what it looks like um and you can read the poem there too um and we did it a couple of times with different kids names and they acted it out um our book was because of an acorn and we talked about um the animals that were in there and what they were eating and also it kind of went through the life cycle of the acorn oak tree all of that and how, um, what we get from the tree. So it's a very few words, but a really great story that um, has a lot of discussion um, points in that one. Then we sang our goodbye song. That was our, um, our morning meeting and our seesaw activities. There was a maple tree activity that talked about the um, maple tree. There was a video on how maple syrup is made and the kids just had a response, like what did you learn? What did you like about it that kind of thing? And then the other um, seesaw activity was, um, there were pictures of foods um, on several different slides. And then there were pictures of um, animals, creatures, that kind of thing. And it was sort of matching, deciding what this animal ate out of the choices of foods. So kind of matching, what do they eat? Um, then their play and choice time activities was a mindful moment, which was um, off of Go Noodle called Bring It Down. It's a calming, relaxing kind of one. Um, there was a, a rhyming activity, and I think I've done this one in one of my um, small group videos. Um, I'll sing it for you anyways. It goes a riddle dee dee, riddle dee dee. Won't you make a rhyme with me? I say cat. You say cat, hat, cat, hat. Um, and so I did a couple, I recorded myself saying a couple of it and then I included a long list of words that they could rhyme with with somebody else. I mean I didn't give them like the rhyming words so I might have said frog and sheep um, and they could think of a rhyming word to go with it. Um, one of the activities was sort your toys or your books or your clothing or anything in your home and then sort it a different way. And then the last activity was make applesauce and I included a recipe for applesauce. And that was Thursday. Okay, Friday hasn't happened yet. I really hope this is what we're doing. Um, there is a poem that's called High in the Tree that we did yesterday that I asked the kids to change it to include a different kind of tree um, and, a, 
and different people and different names. Again, I'll put it here and you can see what it looks like um, and see how they did that one. Um, and then the other second step activity was, or step, other CESA activity was a second step with caring and helping. Oh, I kind of forgot. I usually do the morning meeting. I tell you the morning meeting first. Okay, skip, skip, skip back to morning meeting. Uh, question is, did this grow on a tree? And I haven't really decided what we're gonna do yet, but something that may or may not have grown on a tree. Um, the movement is going to be something called words in motion. So I'm gonna give the kids an action word and um, going to ask friends to, to show us what that action might look like and then how many times we're going to perform it. So um, gallop, slide, bend, twist, um, just those movement words that they might not know yet. So that's our movement. And then our book, ooh, where is it? I have to go get it. So there wasn't a book that I really, really loved about um, food th that comes from trees. So I'm gonna read the book called Secret Tree Fort. And um, it's gonna be kind of a predictor of what we're gonna be doing next week and what other things come from trees. So that one's for um, Friday. And then lastly, our play and choice time activities are um, a mindful moment, a kid's bop one, um, and a recipe for banana bread. Of course, these are all optional. They don't have to be making these things and doing these things. Um, we asked the kids to record a video of them reading their favorite book. And we remind them that you don't have to actually read the words. You could be reading the, the pictures. And then the last one is make your own bingo game and play a game of bingo. You can use letters, you could use numbers, you could use pictures, whatever you want. And that's it. That is the end of this week. Next week will be our last week of trees and I am looking forward to it and looking forward to starting something new. So as always, thanks for watching and thanks for sticking around for this long, long video again. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on our last week of week, uh, last week of trees. And I will see you next time. Have a happy day.